I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello. Welcome to episode 70 of Wise Advice. And uh, today we're going to talk about the blue dots. I know we already have a previous episode that kind of talks about them, but it's one of the things that I think is most critical. And as I read, read through the emails that I want to go through tonight, I, I really see how that ties in to a, to a long-term lifetime achievement of what we're trying to do. Um, again, the show notes, or sorry, the show art for this show was drawn by by Fred. So, I mean, if you're not checking this guy out on Connect, he is an amazing artist. And the cartoon that you see here is all about juggling those blue dots. You know, those blue dots, we got to kind of keep the balls in the air. We got to keep kind of the journey going. And his cartoon just kind of nails it. So, so if you're not following him on Connect, again, I'll put the link in the show notes so you can get a hold of him. And he's also on Instagram at uh, at Freddy Boy, but it's uh, P H R E D G O N Z six seven. Um, so it just a, he's just a cool dude to to watch, and he's killing it. I just saw um, he was down his fifty pounds, so which is uh, amazing work. But I hope you enjoy the cartoon. You know, every once in a while we'll collaborate, we'll kind of throw that stuff together just to kind of keep it going. But um, here's here we go. May writes in out of Pacifica, California. And she says, hi, Mike, I've written to you before when I reached Lifetime after losing 60 pounds, but I heard something this week, actually three times this week, and I wanted to get your input. I was talking to some coworkers, and they asked me if I was still running. I told them yes, that I still try to go at least twice a week, as it helps me stay fit and sane. Then they asked me if I was still doing Weight Watchers. Well, I told them, yes, it helps me with keeping myself accountable of my food choices, and it's more of a lifestyle, not a diet. Again, later in the week, I was talking to some friends, and the topic of food came up, and again, I got the same questions. Are you still on Weight Watchers? I don't understand how eating well is coupled with dieting. Like, you have to eat badly just to live. How do we change this mindset? I'm always thinking of food choices, and it's almost automatic that I pick a healthy choice over a non-healthy one. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of times that I splurge, but it's like the 80-20 rule you mentioned on your last episode. It's very mindful when I do. I just wanted to get your thoughts on this and how to answer my friends when they ask me this question. Thanks for all you do. I wish you good focus. Thanks, May. Well, May, this is uh, this is how I'm going to tie this back to the theme of the show, which is going to be blue dots. Is the blue dots? If you're working the program, and, and you're following the plan, and, and you're tracking everything you eat, and you're staying within the healthy eating zone, you earn those blue dots. So I say it's juggling the blue dots because what happens is, for many of us. We were never really, we never really understood the concept of how to eat, you know. And I, and I know we know how to eat. That's not the issue, but but how to make healthy choices naturally, how to recognize when we're full, how to recognize when we've had enough food, all of that stuff. We kind of have to, kind of have to learn. And some of us, it takes longer to learn than others. So you're absolutely right. Is I will always be on Weight Watchers. You know, there will be days when I'm really good at it, and there will be days when I'm really not good at it. But but I will never drift away from this model because I understand now that this truly is a lifestyle for me. It's not a diet. You know, you don't have to eat badly, you know, to, to live. You can make healthy choices. And so how do we change this mindset? Is we change the mindset by doing exactly what we're doing you know, I said this before, we model that good behavior so that other people see what good behavior looks like. And, and when you explain to them how well you feel and you demonstrate to them all the things that you can do, then they start tying that all together. 
that the eating right keeps your weight right, which means you can work out more, which means you can be more active. All of that plays in. It all ties back to the blue dot because the blue dot teaches you how to eat. And so what I mean by that is, you know, we talked about it before. The blue dot means that you're eating within a healthy zone. It's a 10-point range around of your daily number. So, you know, if your daily target is 30 points a day, it's 27 to 37 points is your is your range. So it's minus 3 up to plus 7 of whatever your daily number is. That is your healthy eating range. When you eat within that range, you get a blue dot. So as we juggle these blue dots around, meaning we try and stay in that range, it teaches us to to eat better. If we stay in that range, at some point we are going to have to make a choice that we wouldn't normally have made. And, And that's where this thing all ties together, is when you come up to the end of your day and you really want to earn that blue dot, and but you have a limited amount of points, you have two options. You can earn your blue dot by by eating something that you probably wouldn't have picked before, but you find something that fits in, or or you can just abandon the idea altogether and just eat whatever you want. And eating whatever you want is where how we got into this situation in the first place. So as we juggle these blue dots and we force them on the calendar and we and we really try really hard to earn a blue dot every day, it teaches us how to eat. And it's that lesson that we call lifetime. It's that that education is what Weight Watchers has provided me as an education on how to make healthier choices for the rest of my life so that I can sustain my weight loss. Great job. Thank you for the question. Rachel writes in and says, Hello, I wanted to recap my bachelorette experience considering my last email was about your 75-25 mindset. Well, we are leaving tomorrow, and I'm at a negative 18 uh, smart points. However, I surprisingly consider it a success for a few reasons. Number one, all weekend, I made mindful decisions. I passed on lots of unhealthy food and only had small bits or portions, which I tracked. Rather than having a full slice of pizza, I had less than a quarter of a slice. At our bottomless, boozy brunch today, I passed on many unfriendly choices and had small portions of food that I really wanted. Number two, I measured all of my alcohol and tracked it all. That's where most of my points came from, even at the bar and winery. I tracked every sip. Number three, I realized that 90% of the time, I'm on the plan. I have two peanut M&Ms a day, and I track them. Rather than finishing the entire bag in my classroom, it took me three days to finish a small cookie because I had a bite a day, and I tracked it. Number four, at the bachelorette parties I went to in the past, I was so concerned with being on plan that I deprived myself and did not have any fun. I missed out on a fun experience like the one I had today. That's not working the plan. That's letting the plan control me. So tomorrow, I plan on going back to the girl who needs two weeks to finish a pack of peanut M&Ms or who needs three days to finish a cookie. I may gain this week but I had a great time that I missed out on in the past. I'm still proud of myself for my decisions and for tracking, even if other people at the bar may have stared as I opened the Weight Watcher app on my phone. Overall, I consider it a success. Have a great day, Rachel. Rachel, that is exactly what we talk about when we do this. When we say when we say that we're working the plan and that we're following the plan, that we're earning the blue dots, you know, and we have to have that mindset. You have to have the mindset balance where, you know, once you reach your goal in your lifetime, and I do caution, you know, this segment here, and I say that one of the things we have to be mindful of is is when you're in weight loss mode, you really need to be super disciplined to earn those blue dots. The more disciplined you are during your weight loss phase, the more these habits become permanent. And as these permanent habits take place and you develop new healthy eating habits, that's what carries you to goal. Then when you reach your goal, you can then make some concessions that maybe you wouldn't have made in the weight loss phase. You know, when you shift to a 75-25 or an 80-20 mindset, it allows yourself for these special events, these once in a you know, rare opportunity events that pop up for you to truly go and enjoy them. Now, I understand that mindset because that's exactly what I did 
there were times in the weight loss phase, I knew it was going to be a short period of my journey. You know, my entire life, you know, that eight months it took me to lose the weight is a small fraction of my life. So during that period of time, I made sacrifices that I don't necessarily make today. Today, I live off that 75 or 80-20 mindset, whereas 80% of the time, I'm tracking everything. I'm being very mindful of what I'm eating. But when things come up, I do respond differently to them at lifetime than I did at my goal weight or at my losing weight phase. So all of that ties back into the juggling of the blue dots because because I worked so dang hard during the weight loss phase to manage the blue dot system, to make sure that I was getting those blue dots and to eat in that healthy range, you know, to make sure I stayed on the plan and stayed on the points, all of that trained me to eat healthy, to make healthier choices naturally. And so naturally, I choose things that I wouldn't normally choose because during that period of of, of really intense discipline, during that time, I was able to, to break the addiction to some bad habits. And now they don't sneak back in. I have complete control over the tracker. I have complete control over what I intake. And so the 20% of the time when, when maybe I'm not following the plan perfectly, it's mindful. It's deliberate. You know, it's for, a, it's for a reason at that exact time. And I do know that it's for a day or two. And then boom, it's right back into it. And what's really nice is the boom right back into it really is nothing more than just living the healthy lifestyle that I developed as I was losing the weight. So Rachel, great job. I'm glad you enjoyed the event because one of the things that you really have to focus on is that is if you are of the mindset where it, you're missing out on things and you're not able to t- participate because you're trying to lose weight then what happens is is you want to give up the plan altogether because it's too restrictive. You want to just say, you know, I can't do this. I can't do this for the rest of my life. And you have that mindset, but not you. Your mindset is healthy. Your mindset is, this is what I do. I'm going to track it most of the time. And, and on occasion, I'm going to enjoy it. And that freedom puts you in control and allows you to continue to maintain your weight and work the plan. So great job. Absolutely great job. Caitlin writes in, says, Hi, Fat Dag. My family and I love listening to your podcast. I find your topics motivating and inspiring. I want to explain how I found you and your podcast. My mom and my sister live in New York, and they join Weight Watchers. My husband and I live in Massachusetts, and my sister came to stay with us for a few weeks and motivated us to join. My husband and I just went to our fourth meeting together. I'm down 7.2 pounds, and he is down 5.4. My husband has never joined Weight Watchers, and I joined and failed a few times about 10 years ago. We both love it now, and this feels like it's a change for good. Our daughter was born in December, and she is our biggest why. My husband and I have both struggled with weight most of our lives, and we want to be healthy and feel great. We want to enjoy our lives together as a family. My husband is a Marine and was honorably discharged four years ago when he didn't re-enlist due to job changes. More than anything, he is motivated now to re-enlist, either reserve or active duty, to have a better life for us, and I support his decision. Thank you for all you continue to do to do for our community. Your positive attitude radiates through your podcast and social media posts, and I can't wait to have the same feeling once we meet our goals. I can already feel it, and I know we will get there. P.S. My sister and I have joked about taking a road trip to go to one of your meetings this summer. We would definitely want to meet you if you ever came to New York or Mass. Just saying. And then P.P.S. I totally laughed out loud when you were talking about the guy wearing the Yankees hat, and I knew that he needed help. I'm not from New York, and I'm not a Yankees fan. All the best, Caitlin. Yeah, Caitlin, um, that was Chris, right? So when Chris came into the meeting room wearing a Yankees hat, I knew we had issues. You know, I knew that, um, you know, beyond what we were there to discuss, I first had to work on his, his choice of, of clothing. Uh, you know, if you come into a Weight Watcher meeting wearing a Yankees hat, it, it just screams, I need some help. And so, so can, all the Boston fans out there, send in your email, tell me how cool it is. And I've gotten a couple inboxes from people who disagree completely. But 
Let's move on from that. So congrats to you and your husband for both making a decision, making a choice to take care of your life and to take care of your kids, right? The, you, you have these wonderful children who, who need you in their life. You need to model good behavior for them. You know, for your entire family, you model that good behavior so that other people in your entire family can see that you're doing good work. So 7.2 pounds for you, 5.4 for your husband, all is great stuff. You know, you're, you're doing fantastic work. And so, so is your daughter is your biggest why? Keep that in mind. What I'm going to ask you to do is individually, I want you to write down your why. I, not just, and you got to dig a little deeper than your daughter. What is it about her? What is it about, you know, what you want to demonstrate to her? How you want to be there for her? What you want her to remember as she gets older and as she turns into adulthood? What you want her life to look like? Dig deep into that why. Write it down individually. You do not share it with each other. But because each of you has to be motivated by your own thing. So work the plan. Continue to enjoy your lives together as a family. Hats off to your husband for serving our nation as a United States Marine. That's incredible. You know, he clearly has focus and discipline. You don't get out of the Marine Corps. You don't even begin to get in the Marine Corps without focus and discipline. So now it's time to use that level of focus and discipline for him and focus it on this part of the journey. And I assure you, that when you hop on the scale, when the two of you reach your goals, and you hop on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode, you're going to look at this and go, well, that's the best thing we've ever done. And your daughter at that point is going to have a completely different life. There will be times when, when the three of you or, or your entire family, however it goes to be, will be able to do things that may not be possible right now. So continue to focus on all that. Continue to focus on getting it done. Thank you for your email, Caitlin. It's an honor to walk this journey with you. Leanne writes in and says, Greetings, Mike. Thank you so much for your, all of your inspiration. I have followed you since day one. Great job with all of your advice. Thanks to your recommendation, I switched from Fitbit to Withings. My third Fitbit actually fell apart, and that was the last straw. My Mother's Day was a Withings Day, and my family got me the scale as well as the steel HR. Right after getting it set up, we went on vacation, and my husband was wearing his Fitbit. While we were walking everywhere, his steps recorded higher. I also noticed that the Withings isn't tracking on every cadence, but seems to go by increments. My question is about this difference in tracking steps. Is there a setting I need to adjust, or sadly, is it just operator error? I love my withings and have set my sights on a fun summer band as a reward for the next five pound loss. Blessings, uh, Leanne. So, Leanne, here's here's where we go back to steps in the scale. Uh, it's just data. So, as you you know you know obviously you know I'm going to kind of back up a second and we talk about the Withings and today as coincidentally Withings and Nokia merged uh, and so now it's no, uh, Nokia Health replaces Withings so if you go to Withings.com it'll automatically transfer to to Nokia uh, the Nokia Health web website all of the you know the step trackers the scales all the products are are supported all they did was change the name the HealthMate app got a new update. So that was pretty cool. As you know, I'm in, in talks with them to kind of to continue to to promote their products because those are the products that I use to get to goal. So I want to go back to the scale, and I want to go back to the tracker and the difference you see in the data. The beautiful thing that I love about the Steel HR tracker for me now is that I can wear it every single day. I don't take it off at night. And, you know, the 25-day battery life that it has allows me to just wear this thing so I truly can see the data. So if I walk... You know, here and it and it's ten steps, but the tracker calls it nine or the tracker calls it twelve, but it's it's relative. So every day I can look at what I did the previous day and and compare days to a trend line. Am I getting more than normal or am I getting less than normal? The exact number doesn't matter anywhere. You know, there's there's no one that's going to look at an exact number and say, oh, I got more steps than you, and that's why it's working. So what I want you to do is, and I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know why they track differently. I, I don't measure the steps. 
uh, in mind. I've been wearing it now for, for a month or so. And so I don't look at the number and say, you know, I don't calculate it out to say, no, that was really 17 steps. So but what I do is I look day to day to day and say, I got more today than I did yesterday. I, got, I want to get more tomorrow than I got today. And I follow that trend line. And the other thing, obviously, is you, if you compare two different people walking the same distances, your stride length matters. You're, so there's all kinds of things that can put you in a different track. So let's back up. Just like we talked about the scale weight. You know, my scale, when we look at it now, my scale is up about 10 pounds from when I hit my goal weight. But I feel way better. My clothes fit better. So it's not about the number on the scale. I've continued to lose body fat and gain muscle as the scale started climbing for me. So the scale for me is just data. The actual number is irrelevant. It's the trend line that matters, and it's the overall feeling that matters. If you apply that same logic to your step tracking, here's what you come up with. The actual steps do not matter. What matters is, am I moving more? Am I deliberately getting up to get some exercise? Am I able to track you know, longer because I'm wearing this thing longer and not having to take it off the charge and forgetting to wear it? You know, and so therefore you can truly get a better assessment for an entire month because you always have the plan with you. You always have the tracker with you and you can see the data and you can compare the trend lines. That's where I want you to set your focus. Uh, you're, you're doing fantastic work. You know, the fact that you guys are in this together is, is killing it. I'll end this to say it doesn't matter what your tracker says if you're not or your step tracker says, if you're not tracking your food properly. No amount of exercise can can supplement or replace or bury poor eating habits. The poor eating habits are, are changed, are educated, are redeveloped by juggling those blue dots, by getting those blue dots all in a row, getting them in line, working the plan properly, making healthy choices. All of that is way more significant then stress them over a handful of steps here and there. The purpose of your exercise is to keep your mind focused. The purpose of your exercise is to keep your body limber and moving, but it should not be your, your focus and your effort for your weight loss effort. That's what eating healthy does. That's what juggling the blue dots does. The more you do that, the better success you're going to have. And then what happens? Your exercise becomes extra credit in your weight loss and you get it done. So. Uh, Leanne, thank you for that email. You know, very, very good. And and so we'll end the show with the blue dots just kind of to give that recap in case you missed it is that is that you want to focus on those blue dots. You want to be in that healthy eating range so that as you're working out, you you feel good about yourself and, and, and you're getting the program done. What I don't want you to have happen is I don't want you to rely on your exercise as your weight loss and something happens and you twist an ankle and now all of a sudden you can't manage because you don't know how to track properly, and then the weight creeps up. Because whatever you do to lose the weight, you have to be able to do for life. So if you're running 10 miles a day, when you're 89 years old, you're going to run 10 miles a day. If you can't do that, you can track for the rest of your life. You can earn your blue dots for the rest of your life. That'll carry you to goal. So keep up the great work. You guys are doing phenomenal work. I get emails constantly. I see tags constantly on Connect where you're telling me how great you're doing. And, and, you know, what I do know when I see that is we're making a difference. I see that we have the ability to get this done, and I just truly want to know what it is you're celebrating. Let's share it on the air. Let's go to fatdag.com, click on Listen Now, send in your comments, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. And I really want you to email your celebrations because that tells me how proud of what you're doing you are. And when you're proud, I'm proud. But that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.